We don't talk about these things that, that actually go on in the church. When, when folk get their healing, when it comes to immorality, they, they owe others who have yet to get their healing prayers and, and to ask the Lord to use them and to use us to reach others. Well, now this lady is damaged goods. She's damaged because this guy took her through the ringer. She finds out that she's pregnant at the same time her girlfriend is pregnant. It's all of this stuff that's happening. And this is the stuff that happens in the old life. It should not happen in the new. And when it does, it is to be repented of. You must turn away from it. You must run from it. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. We'll come back and pick that up, Lord willing, next week. But I want to go here to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and take up a few of these labels that the Apostle Paul found that these things were actually occurring in the church amongst believers. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 20. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would. In other words, I want to come in and look in on this congregation. And I want to find you in a way that is well. When I come, it can be a sunny day, so to speak. I want to find this congregation. I want to find you where it's pleasant for me to come. And when I show up, as it continues, and that I should be found unto you such as you would or would not. Paul is saying, I don't want to come in and you don't want to see me because you know, know things are not right. I, I want to back up and just look at that again and, and say it exactly the way that it is. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I wish and that I should be found unto you such as you wish not. <laughs> That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. Lest. That be, and these are the things that actually the apostle found when he came. There were debates, envies, wraths, strifes, backbiting, whisperings, swellings. That's to be puffed up, pompous, tumults, contention, division. In some churches, some churches have a church within a church. We saw that in one of the churches in Asia Minor, where there were a couple of different theological systems being taught, and you had those who had gravitated to those teachings. We heard through verse 20, but we did that to get to verse 21. Unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you. In other words, I'm going to have to deal with this. And listen, these matters and these sins are of the variety. It's a little awkward to talk about. You, you, you have to pray that the Lord, yeah, he will humble us if we have to deal with this in the church. But now we don't deal with nothing like that. It's like you just do what you want to do. It doesn't matter. It's almost as if sin doesn't have any effect on the church when the truth be told, according to the Holy Scriptures, a little bit of sin, a little bit of leaven will work through an entire church. I gave this illustration a few years ago at a revival. You could be in a church just like the young lady who was in school and for some reason it seems like you know, I didn't wear glasses, but glasses became like a stigma. And that's not fair. Not fair to them because who, who wanted to wear glasses who didn't need them? 
But just picture that in the church setting, that you're in the church for years and all of a sudden there's this person. And yeah, maybe it was something that it didn't quite appeal. And then one day you saw them beyond the glasses. And, and all of a sudden, that was just something there. It wasn't real. It was lust. Because if you're married and they're married, but next thing you know, confusion starts. And that thing will work all the way through the church if it's not addressed. A little bit of sin leaveneth the whole lump. So Paul realizes, if I'm going to deal with this, I'm going to be humble. I'm going to have to mourn in the sense of, and I believe that we can also carry this because you got to understand, these are sensitive matters. And when the church has wounded herself, has done things to, to go out into the world and, and become trapped by sin or, or allow temptation or lust to become temptation and, and temptation to become sin. And then sin, you know, when it's finished, it becomes death. Something dies. Fellowship with God is interrupted. And bad things can happen. Paul said, that I shall bewail many which have sinned already. That I should mourn. And have not repented of the uncleanness. And the fornication. And the lasciviousness which they have committed. We, we've been introduced some, to some of this language before. The uncleanness. Uncleanness is uncleanness when it comes to morality. You, when you hear that someone in scripture had an unclean spirit, but that unclean spirit, it depends on what their focus is. Like in uh, Mary Magdalene, she had seven demons in her. And I grant you the things she did that they were immoral and they would be on the scale of whorish. Yes. That's a word you don't hear in the church anymore. Whorish, a whore, or a dog, which is a, a male prostitute. <clears throat> Today we may not have men who are being paid, but we have men who live like that. We have women who live like that. And uncleanness can be summed up in the acts that they commit. It's unclean. It's Unnatural. These are things we don't talk about. But here we have a church that is defeated. We can't hardly get a prayer through. We're not seeing salvations. We're not seeing healings and deliverances. When was the last time you saw a bona fide miracle by God? We're not seeing them. You want to know why? Because the Spirit of God is not obligated to work where there's mess and where there's confusion. You can ask Joshua. Joshua went up to Ai, figured he'd go up there, wrap that up. It'll be just a, a, a few men, a little bit of time. But the Lord God had warned them, listen, when you go up there, do not take anything from up there because it is the accursed thing. Well, went up there, that's what happened. The party that took it, brought it back, hid it in his tent from Jericho. They go to Ai and then they're defeated. Joshua, he does what the average preacher does. He wallows all in the ground and, oh my Lord, oh, we went up there and we defeated, oh me, oh my Lord, just say get up, you got sin in the camp. And the Lord feels the same way today. We have sin in the camp. You can't have one member living in open sin or secret sin. You can't. You can't. Listen, I, I know too much about this, y'all. Someone has to tell you this. You can't have anyone practicing sin who, who names the name of Christ. Because this is what the scripture says, that if a brother or a sister who named the name of Christ, that they are actually practicing sin, they're living in sin, you are not to eat with them. 
Because by eating with them, you are giving them license to say, listen, I know you're living like this. I know y'all doing this, that, and all. You are sanctioning them. That's what the scripture said. But see, we don't believe what God said because we're smarter than God. Wrong. We're not. Uncleanness. It is what whores do. And it's what dogs do. This is stuff. Watch this. We've all had our conversation or our lifestyle in the world. There are things we've seen, places we've been, things. Watch this. This is what I've, I've told our congregation. Listen, we've done things that we told someone when we were in high school. Man, I never do that. That ain't me. Whoa, that ain't me. Many of us, we ended up doing those same exact things. Okay, be that as it may. Now we're saved. Now we're in Christ. These things do not become Christ. These, listen, holiness becometh God. But sin does not and abominations do not. And we have abominable practices accepted in the church as if it's nothing. And as I laid it out today, I'm going to lay it out to you tonight. When you have two men who lay down together carnally, one of them is behaving like the woman. When you have two women who lay and lie carnally together, one of them are behaving like the man. But watch this. When you have a married couple, and that should be the only parties actually engaged in pri the privacy of marriage, is a married couple that's married in a biblical covenant, that if they do the same exact things as two men who lay down and as two women that lay down, one of them are actually standing in as if they are another. In other words, if the wife, she's behaving like a man and, and vice versa. You can't bring that in. Marriage is honorable. The bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He, he's saying marriage... The marriage bed is undefiled. This word here is undefiled. But if you are a huckster, if you are a howling, if you're someone who wants and, and you want to take the word of God and fleece the flock, you can pervert the word of God. Don't tell me you cannot pervert the marriage bed. And that sin is relevant in the church. When I say relevant, it's real. Folk will tell you that they do these things, these abominable things. This young lady who she was just about 13, 14 years old, she's involved with this pastor and in these orgies, he bringing in these men and, and these women and all this stuff. And she's having an abortion and her friend is getting, getting pregnant and all of this, all of this stuff that's happening. We have it happening across the fruited plains. I and mean, then we were, we, were, we were running around talking about God this and, and singing and carrying on and all of this stuff like that and talking about the Lord and all. The Lord is saying to us, just shut up and be quiet. Get right with me. For without holiness, no man going to see God. Someone needs to declare this. Uncleanness is exactly what it is. It's nasty. It's filthy. It's dirty. Fornication includes adultery and incest. Don't think that's happening in the church? You don't think fornication is happening in the church? Folk come together? And, and I know I know about this. And it was, listen, it was wrong when I did it. It was sin. But now it's in. It's attractive. The church will not say anything about it. Why? Because we don't want to lose nobody. Listen, we may not lose anyone. We may hold on to them. But one day they're going away from here. And someone needs to tell them the truth. And lasciviousness, as that word again, the license really to just let free will pass feelings, pass emotions. I take your husband, I come back and get your son. That's the past feelings. That stuff is happening in the church. And we're talking about, you know, we're on our way to glory. 
We on, we on the battlefield for the Lord. We jumping up and shouting and carrying on and, and all that kind of stuff. And we got sin in the camp. It's acceptable from the pulpit to the yard. Which they have committed. This is the church committing this. These are not unbelievers. I believe the Spirit of God has made it known unto the apostle. But we're going to reel it in right here and close out. Eternal Father in heaven, we thank you for these moments where we have seen the will of God, which is really to live a life free of the practice of sin, to deal with it expeditiously, even as Christ did once and for all, and the way that's going to be dealt with when we leave this place, that we should live our life as to how he dealt with sin, our sins on the tree once and for all, and but how he lived and how he died, we should live that way. Lord, help us. Lord, if it's one out there who is a child of God, and, and they'll be convicted and say, this is wrong. What, what pastor has been saying is that this is wrong. This is truly wrong. I'm not a, I'm not a whore. I'm, I'm not a dog. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a male prostitute. I'm a child of God if you say. Lord, I pray you make it real to them, as the Apostle Paul had to do. And, and we do this mourning in the sense that this is something that we don't want to have to talk about. We want to talk about how much God loves us and the peace of God and, and even the prosperity of God when it comes to prosperity as the Bible teaches it. To walk in his success. To prosper as the scripture says, even as our soul, as our suke prospereth. Father, we pray that you would make this real to us as we see the hourglass is not in our favor. On the world scene, the Antichrist, his spirit is working and it's cumulating, cumulating into the place where he's about to, if he's not already on the earth and behind the scenes, it, it, it won't be long. Someone is going to be around when this happens. And things are happening so fast, Lord, I believe this generation might be it. I don't know. But Lord, help us that we would deal with sin in our own life. That we would deal with sin the same way Dr. John Cherry would, would say. That we would hate the sin in our life the same way we hate it in our brothers and sisters. Father, we thank you for these moments that we've had to view the will of God. Having our minds armed, weaponized as Christ did when he faced sin. And that this is how we would live in the present moment. We thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. So, beloved, we want to thank you certainly for uh, taking the time to view this teaching uh, slash preaching, uh, admonition, exhortation, uh, be that as it may. And we want to encourage our believers uh, that are in your homes that are viewing these messages. Uh, continue to stay in the word. Continue to pray for us as we're praying for you. Uh, we thank the Lord today <clears throat> as uh, as your pastor. We served our first communion and uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful time uh, of just going to the highest height that a congregation can go together. You cannot go to the highest mountain and, and be any higher than having Holy Communion. And Holy Communion actually takes us on a journey, the journey of the life and the ministry and the passion, the suffering of Christ all the way down to uh, the institution of the Lord's Supper and his arrest Yes, his suffering, his death, his burial, his resurrection, because he said, this do in remembrance of me. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And it's not so much remembering him like he's not going to come back. Because actually it says, until I come. So his resurrection is in view. So we thank you for taking the time to view uh, this teaching.
For those of you, you may be here in the Sandstone, uh, Central Virginia area, and you're looking for a church home. We're a Bible church. We are a community, the Baptist church. We are uh, an independent, fundamental Baptist church. Don't let that word fundamentalism uh, trouble you. We just believe in the fundamentals of the faith. We want to teach the scriptures. We believe in the inerrancy of scripture. Things are done decently and in order in this house. That's how things are supposed to be done. But if you're looking for a church home, uh, we would love for you to pray about joining our fellowship enough to come by, sample the ministry, and see what the Lord is doing in our midst. We teach from the Word of God. We preach from the Holy Scriptures. And uh, I believe you'll find that we would uh, be perhaps a home for you to come and to bring your family and to, to learn to grow with us. Well, for, certainly for those of you who are watching and you don't know the Lord and you're not saved, well, we're going to be praying for you, but let me leave this with you. The scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's an unrighteous, no, not one. That would be you. And that Christ Jesus, he tasted death for all of us. He's the one who went to the tree, became a curse, bore our sins on the cross. He was crucified, as the scripture says. He died to death. He was buried, and on the third day, he was raised from the dead. That's what God is requiring, that you believe. He'll give you the faith from the statements I've made. For faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The spirit of God, he becomes instrumental in taking the word and using it as a mirror to reveal you unto you. So you don't need to see the Savior until you realize that you're drowning in sin. Once you see yourself perishing, as the scripture says, then you need, you know you need a savior. And that's when <laughs> the one who is the door to the sheepfold is, is he comes at that point as the spirit makes him known to you that he is the only all sufficient savior and he will save you. He requires that you have a change of mind towards sin. He says, repent, repent. Come to the place where you have a change of mind about living in sin, where you want to live in safety, in righteousness, being rescued, being delivered from a life of sin, that you might live a life of holiness and righteousness. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that. Let me pray for you. Eternal Father in heaven, if there's a man, a woman, a boy, or girl, they don't know you in salvation. Father, I pray that you won't let them go to sleep until they open their Bibles and you take them to the Gospel of John or to the, the first epistle of John and let them read and do like you did others, Lord, like you did me. Take the scripture, Lord, and speak to them. And may they give their life to you tonight is my prayer. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, until next time, be blessed.